This opening foreshadowing is fantastic. This rat gets lit up by some acid, leaving only his bones, totally setting up a classic Rick and Morty adventure. I almost parked. I know driving around in a spaceship is cool and all, but why does Rick even need the spaceship anymore since he regularly transports? Uh-huh. Well, I thought it was cool. It was also a great way to waste some time so you could fill all 22 minutes of your episode. What is this face you're making? I mean, it's pretty much the same face Morty makes 100% of the time you tell him something. It's a combination of exhaustion and disdain. Usually you ignore it, but this episode wants to set up a relationship tiff, so now all of a sudden you're Mr. Sensitive. Shout out to the props guy on set who loads the exact amount of bottles and trash for Rick and Morty to kick out every time they exit Herbie the Space Bug. If this vehicle is such a mess, why is the only trash by the door? While I'm glad to see the Hyrulean economy has taken over the universe, there's no way Rick is dumb enough to trade 10 red rupees for 10 green ones. The red ones are worth 10 times as much. How will you ever afford your Flamebreaker armor? Okay, but does anything beat fake crystals and a fake arm? <laughs> Maybe fake crystals, a fake arm, and the wisdom to go ahead and keep shooting until they're all dead? Also, why are Peter Gorey and Guilford Grimley even holding guns if they aren't going to shoot back? These tubes have no regulator to let the carbon monoxide be exhaled, and I don't see any bubbles coming from their noses. I'm no expert, but this is clearly a suffocation machine. Guess he took his threat pretty serious. Yeah. Sound does not travel through Mountain Dew this well, and to be honest, bones don't float in it either. Of course, Rick could have invented some sort of liquid modifier to give it the density of acid that also has some sort of acoustic transmission molecule or something, but my patience for BS tank is running low, so... Since when do they title these episodes in the open? This is like The Simpsons' Bart gets hit by a car title that comes out of nowhere. Should we use a different vat? Does acid lose its acid power the more it dissolves? What am I, an acidologist? I know this extremely hilarious conversation happens so that Rick and Morty will have to stay down here a little bit longer, but if the idea of dropping their buddy in the same vat of acid is potentially a problem, then why don't they just use one of the many other vats in the factory? It's funny they care so much, but seriously, this is not a difficult decision. Look, I've watched the John Wick movies, and those movies clearly prove that you can't fire laser dissolvers through faux acid water without at least first priming the xenon. Also, there is no way that ladle was long enough to cover this distance. Dewey! You said! Not the rat, the guy! Oh! My lord! Look at the size of the bones on that rat! <laughs> Sometimes, things are so funny, they actually need multiple sins removed. Also, I love this gangster character so much, I want to remove a sin. But then Rick and Morty end up murdering these guys. I really hope that when he said, Even if you kill me, you're a dead man. That means he'll respawn in another episode. But until then, he's dead forever, and that is a shame. <laughs> See? Now that wasn't that hard, was it? Maybe just do that the first time, okay? Also, someone just give these guys their own show. I would watch a whole three seasons of these gangsters, followed by a contract dispute that leads to a split-up fourth season just to watch more of them. I'm resending the fact that you killed them, but these guys are the best. Oh, was it worse than when I was a pickle? Oh, that's right, you weren't there for that. Turns out, kind of cool. Maybe there's a connection there. Excuse me? What's that cool thing you did without me again? The awesome thing? I, I, I guess you wanted a dragon? I haven't seen this much fan service callback humor since Jeremy's college girlfriend narrated the Prometheus School of Not Lap Dancing 40 Seconds of Logos. I guess the rest of the family went on vacation? Does Rick regularly park his spaceship in the garage? There are times when this garage has cars in it, and other times there's nothing but Rick in his lab, so I'm wondering where he keeps the spaceship in those moments. There's no such thing as a bad idea, Morty. It's about execution. While this episode is mostly free from the last two episodes' psychological self-evaluation, there are still a couple of moments in this episode that have that hang-up. Get over it already! Save your place like in a video game, but in real life so that you can try stuff and then go back to your save point. Yes, Morty, I saw it on Futurama. Oh. And now the show is having its South Park moment where it's worried that it will do something that another show did, which became the basis for The Simpsons Already Did It. You even dragged another Matt Groening show into it. I may have never noticed this before, but does Rick keep a fire extinguisher way up high on a shelf nearly out of reach? All right, class. Remember when Morty went to school and had normal interactions with daily life? Is it a bad sign when you're having nostalgia for the first season of a show that's only in season four? Asking for a every show ever. Also, I don't doubt that this guy's class is probably the worst math class you could ever witness, but I don't understand why there is a two plus two equation on the board unsolved. Nobody in this class is having trouble with two plus freaking two, are they? The show attempts to establish here that as soon as Morty dies, he resets to his last save point. But that's not what we saw when Rick killed him earlier. And you may say that's because Rick was the one who pushed the button. And I'll say, well, doesn't that mean that it should only reset if Rick died? And you might say it's still attached to Morty's DNA somehow, and the same person who sets it has to reset it. 
And then I'll say, but later Jerry resets a save point that Morty started. And you'll say, it's just a cartoon. Why do I care so much? And I'll say, you're the one who started it, man. And you'll say, you're not Jeremy. I don't have to listen to you. Sorry, I, I may be working some things out here. My point is the death reset thing is convenient and unexplained. Can we carry on? Trumping. These examples of mundane ways to Groundhog Day are hilarious. But if he's resetting when he misses, why are there scattered cheesy balls on the table? This turn into this long relationship segment is exactly why I will never give up on Rick and Morty. It's carefully constructed, nuanced, and confident, even though it remains irreverent and crass. Sure, you basically know where it's going, but it still executes it beautifully. Take your sin removal, you rascals. You earned it. Having said that, it seems like Morty is so Jessica obsessed that I don't understand why he even takes an interest in this girl. He even knows he has Jessica on the hook after he acted all aloof around her a minute ago. Yes, show, we know how they met. We were watching, remember? This is the show briefly going into Self Park. There is no way anybody knows where the tail section of this plane is after that crash, much less created a detailed map of the entire terrain. If they did, they'd have already checked the tail of the plane. I guess the news didn't give a shit about the other survivors? Or the other survivors died before the helicopter could save them? Look, I know Jerry is dumb, but I doubt he's I can't recognize the difference between this and the TV remote dumb. Also, why is Morty's bag on the side of the couch open with the remote control sitting neatly on top for this type of thing to even happen? So from the time just before he met his new boo, Morty never once set a new save point? Like, not even accidentally? Dude went from resetting cheese ball tosses to never resetting anything cold turkey? Nope. Also, I bet you're kicking yourself for already burning that Live Die Rick Pete episode title, huh? I don't respect time travel. If Ant-Man and the Wasp can do it, I'm not interested. Funny, because just like Ant-Man and Endgame, you depended on a completely random and convenient button push to move your plot along. You just substituted falling on your butt for a random rat, and now you're the very thing you despise. Also, didn't you shrink yourself in one episode? Also, also, Rick has crazy pop culture knowledge for a guy who's always going on adventures, drinking, and building inventions. It wasn't so much a do-over as it was isolating a moment in time, splitting your probable selves, and shunting you into a near-duplicate, equally probable reality. This goes by fast, so let's sort this out. What Rick seems to be saying is that at the exact moment Morty presses the save button, the remote looks for parallel dimensions happening in concurrent real time that have the previous save point moment just now happening. The problem is Morty was in a relationship for several months, which means that when Jerry reset to that save point, Morty traveled to a universe where all the same things that happened many months ago in his universe just started happening happening in the new universe. I thought it was impossible to think of something more confusing, convenient, and messy than time travel. But congratulations. And even so, this means as many times as Morty pushed the button, and for all the seconds, hours, days, months that passed in those moments, have all actually passed in his original dimension. Without time travel, which we know Rick hates, he's been missing from his home family for quite some time. Will the show ever deal with this? No. Does it matter? Garlic bread that there was already a you in each probable dimension, so we had to solve for that. By melting the previous Morty? Doesn't that leave a dimension without a Morty? Shouldn't they swap dimensions? How does killing one of them even solve anything? Also, it's not like leaving a burning pile of Morty goo in a dimension really changes anything. It's just a dead Morty instead of a live one, right? That's right, you little bitch. It's the prestige. You prestige Rick yourself. Come and <laughs> the prestige being used as a verb. Oh, this is a great episode. The original split is still time stamped. I can make it so those Mortys never existed at all. Wait, what? Without time travel? I can't tell if the show knows it's talking out of its butt or if it actually thinks this makes sense. And that's not a good sign. You live with the consequences. Those things happen somewhere, but you can merge the probable realities so that only one Morty did them. How can you merge all these realities when a Morty died in half of them? Not to mention all the ones where doing one thing would have meant he couldn't have done another thing. Wait, so, so you're not even my Rick? If this is a parallel universe Rick, that means there are several other parallel universe Mortys who all challenged their Ricks to build the same remote, right? There isn't just one Morty who asked for this and all the other parallel Mortys just went to the room instead of challenging Rick to make this thing. Let's face it, there are so many versions of Morty doing this that it would be an impossible mess to clean up. And when did this Rick figure out that this wasn't his Morty? <laughs> So did the girl who became Morty's girlfriend merge with all the other versions of her who pepper sprayed him? I bet she's super confused about all this right now. All right, come on, Morty, let's go home. Wait, what? Th this isn't our reality? Wait. Of course not, because dimension portals are this show's get out of plot jail free card. Also, if that's the case, where and when did they enter this reality? According to my frustrated half-understanding of the concept, it had to be before he pushed the button the first time, right? Did he drag Morty to another dimension while he was sleeping? Either I'm not smart enough to comprehend these complexities, or this show is shoveling so much nonsense on top of nonsense that it hopes we don't notice. Or both. Both could be true. 
So Johnny Carson is still alive and doing his show at 95. Ed McMahon is 97. Man, Johnny Carson really hated Jay Leno in this universe, didn't he? Uh, our next guest uh, gave us, well, actually very little information uh, besides the fact that he is uh, impervious to acid. So we put him on the show without even rehearsing it because that's how talk shows in this parallel universe in 2020 were. The goggles do nothing. Make sure you click that bell icon. <clears throat> Sellouts. But clicking the little bell icon is how you make sure you get notified every time we release a video. So click it. <clears throat> Sellouts. What is this face you're making? You... Well, that's my face, sir. You know who I am? Don't you even know who my father is? Ugh, you are a snob and a half. And then little Tommy Flip Flam's running down the hyperloop. His ass is on fire from xenon fluid. I got a rash so bad on my ass, I can't even sit down. But you know me, I can't complain. Great story, boss. <laughs> really detailed. We're all stories in the end. Freeze, mother bitches! I'm a god. You're a god. I'm a god. I'm not the god. Way. I'm going to start beating the shit out of you in the next five seconds, and you're going to swallow a lot of blood for a fucking billfold. But father, I have dreams and courage and the name of an excellent cosmetic surgeon. Fear not, someday word will reach you about the success of me, Jennifer Love Hewitt. The gorillas just went wild. They jumped all over his body and threw him around like a rag doll to get to those blueberries. Hey, let me talk to him. Will you, would you live? <laughs> 